is Aaron at Power Popaholic. I am talking with singer-songwriter Bill Lloyd, who uh, started in the 80s with a country music duo, Forster and Lloyd, and, and they racked up a bunch of hit singles on the Billboard country star charts at that time. And uh, then after that, uh, Bill went solo and has been putting out great albums for the past 20 years. Wonderful stuff. Uh, Bill Lloyd's Working the Long Game album was in my 2018 top 10. And uh, last year, I believe, uh, his project Ghost Outfit uh, was also a wonderful album. Great album um, with his buddy, uh, with several buddies on it, including a favorite of mine, Cheap Trick guitarist Tom Peterson. And now you have a new album out. So, Bill, tell me a little bit about this new uh, selection of songs that you put together. Well, thank you, Aaron. Um, it's kind of a retrospective uh, because I've been making these solo records for a long time now. <laughs> and and uh, the first one was recorded in the mid 80s and didn't come out till, it's funny, my first album called Feeling the Elephant did not come out till about the same time Foster and Lloyd got started. But I was recording before the, the country thing and the country thing was sort of the sidestep for me. Uh, I was already making, you know, the, the kind of sort of singer songwriter meets power pop kind of records even before that. And, uh, and so, and, and, and after Foster and Lloyd, I was in part of another country project called the Sky Kings, but, uh, but I was still making these records all along the way. So uh, that's like 35 years now. So I have to go lie down now. And, <laughs> <laughs> and now I, I'm, and just, it, I just thought it was time to put together a package that reflected kind of some of my favorite, uh, you know, songs from the uh, solo records that I did that kind of makes a, even though there weren't hits there, it's kind of like a power pop selected songs kind of thing. And it goes from 1985 through last year's album. I did an album last year called uh, Don't Kill the Messenger. And uh, there's a song from that. And uh, then there's a song that got remixed called Mistakes Were Made that uh, my friend Glenn Rosenstein just out of the blue remixed for me. And uh, so I got, I, I had that and I thought, well, I can use that in some way. And so it fit on this project, you know, and, and uh, my friend Steve Boyle did a great video for it too so there's a you know all right so like how did you come about picking these songs from throughout your career because well i mean there's so many good ones it's hard to pick in my oh, opinion kind, oh my god that would say. take me so long you're kind to say thank you i i it's a lot of it is uh, i i picked from uh just the idea of like what's available and what's not and there was three from my first album which is out of print now physically in a physical mm -hmm. product, you can hard to find unless you buy a used copy somewhere. And then uh, Standing on the Shoulders to Giants needs a reissue as well. So that was from the late 90s. So, uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that some of the tracks from those out of print records were on there. And, uh, and it's just something that felt good to me. I wanted every song to have be really melodic and, and uh, fit the power pop, uh, you know, tag. Yeah, that, that's something that surprised me probably the most out of everything, because most artists, even if they are power pop, they won't explicitly say it on their album, or, you know, sometimes they'll mention it in their songs, or they'll keep it as part of their songs, but they will almost never mention it as part of an album title. So I was really surprised that you did that. Well, it was, it was kind of a way to focus in on that aspect of what I do. And all my records have uh, a little bit of, all my records have that as part of them, but it's also the singer songwriter thing. And also the fact that I'm from the South and a songwriter and there's a real rootsy vibe to a lot of what I do uh, in, in, the, uh, in the way of not just country, but also other Southern kind of things. So uh, I, I just wanted this to be that, melodic right. up-tempo poppy vibe you know very good very good yeah. um i want to ask a, a few follow-up questions that are you know not so much related to the album but um number one I, I like i told you i loved uh project ghost outfit is there any kind of sequel on the way there's a bunch of more songs that we haven't recorded yet 
you know cheap trick has a brand new album out we can plug that called in another world and uh I think that's the name of it. I hope so. <laughs> and uh, so, and it sounds amazing. So I, if, if you haven't listened to that yet, that's, that's something that's coming out any, any day now. There's like two singles that have been out. That's on so, my, that's on my list. That's on my short yeah. list actually, because they're yeah. like, you know, they're the, the godfathers at this point. Well, um, they're, they're so, uh, right in there with uh, a lot of folks, right. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, my, uh, my, I always loved the Beatles growing up and, and uh, by the time I was a teenager uh, there were bands like Bad Finger and uh, the Raspberries and, uh, and bands like that, that harkened back to that Beatles meets who, you know, kind of real power, you know, powerful guitars, but also a real melodic pop sound. And, and I was always attracted to those bands and, uh, and uh, cheap trick certainly came out out of out of all that as well. Yeah, and uh, the, the cool thing I, I like where you you start there because power pop it's it's one of those genres that you know sometimes people change the definition of what's power pop, what's not power pop. It's a great like unanswered question that continually gets you know conversations going on the internet. Uh, and, yeah, and, their whole their whole websites are devoted to that. I think. Yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. Uh, a, whole, I, a lot of pieces written about you know how you can't really define power pop. But, yeah, uh, I like. I always I always looked at it like like you know Pete Townsend coined the phrase, and and he also uh, described the sound real well in the interview that where he kind of just came up with the word power pop. Right. And if you look it up on there's there's actually a video out there of him talking off the top of his head and, and uh, he was trying to describe what their new single was, which was, I can see for miles and miles. And to me, that's just the perfect definition of a power pop song. It's got that real powerful rhythm section and guitars, but it's also got the, some cream to go with the crunch, you know, it's got the really smooth uh, melodic vocal on top of the, the powerful uh, crunchy guitars. So uh, I, you know, I always thought, he it, it it started there for me just because he coined the phrase yeah but you know what people won't can don't really consider the who a power pop group they were well they weren't influence. they they weren't they started off being that but right but but you know uh they morphed into something else and and that kind of goes with all bands you know a cheap trick uh certainly were an arena rock band as well as being a power pop band correct marshall crenshaw uh first album everybody loves to hail that as being a power pop classic but marshall has made all kinds of records over the years and so have i you know it's, yes. it's like the, the idea that you have to stay in that kind of place uh wear the right colored shirt and have the right haircut you know i, I don't <laughs> go for that I, I just feel like power pop is sort of a sound more than a more right than a, no i know. agree i agree 100 percent with you there and i think yeah. that it's um it's a it's a good thing that you don't want to necessarily pigeonhole yourself into one style of power pop. You don't want to pigeonhole yourself into one style of music. You want to just be able to play anything you like. And if you have a couple power pop songs, great. If you don't, you know, you have other songs along with it. It just the variety is what makes you a better artist as a whole, in my opinion. I love the way you think, Aaron. <laughs> So, I love it. You know, uh, Terry Adams from NRBQ uh, yep. used to used to call it the Border Patrol, because, <laughs> you know, because uh, you know they were everything. Uh, in fact, they called their thing Omni Pop at one point because of uh, yeah. just all the various styles that they would incorporate. That's true. So, they, uh, they mixed everything together. Another question. Uh, another question with you is: You did have a reunion with Radney Foster in 2011 with "It's Ready Tomorrow." I'm wondering if you guys ever you're still in touch and maybe you're thinking of getting together again for. Yeah. I mean, whatever. we're, we're, we're going to have a cup of coffee, a uh, safe distance cup of coffee uh, <laughs> here coming up soon. Um, we've, we've, we've stayed in touch. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, we're talking about, uh, he's got a, he's actually got a, a really cool project going and he invited me to come right with him. And, and we'll, we're go I think we'll do that. Some of that here sometime uh but you know it's just now we're, we're just now getting the vaccines out and all that so uh 
but things will open up again. I, I, have, I, have I, I hope so. That leads I, into my, my next question. How much do you miss the long players? Oh, and gosh. <laughs> well, you know what? We finally have a date booked for this summer uh, for Great. a limited – limited i mean, usually we'll pack in about plug it people. plug it man <laughs> yeah usually we'll have about 500 people in a room but uh i think of the the max they will allow will be about 200 but but we're uh, we're going to do a beatles album we're going to do help and oh, very uh, nice and uh so i'm already in the process of getting some singers and uh starting to go through that material but uh that'll be in june so that's a little ways off Wonderful. But hopefully by that time, most people will be vaccinated and, you know, we can return to some sense of, of, uh, get some live music going of you normal, know. You, know, you know, what the new normal. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, tell me, you know, this album, a selection of power pop songs, 1985 to 2020, where is it available now? Is it going to be on Amazon? Is it going to be on all the registered? It is. Or? It's, on, it's on all those places, uh, and, you know, for the people who like to buy the digital. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the physical product will be at BillLloydMusic.net, which is my site. And uh, there's a company called uh, Fan Clubhouse that does my uh, – they, 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 they send that stuff out for me. Is any of the – the past solo albums that you had, you'd mentioned um, Standing on the Shoulders of Giants. Uh, are we looking at uh, basically uh, remasters and, and uh, added tracks, you know, re-releases of these solo albums soon? These are all, they're all remastered. All the tracks, there's 15 songs on this album, uh, which is part of the title too, uh, you know. And, and uh, so there's 14 that are remastered, which course i think that always makes them sound better than ever and then uh the uh 15th song is a complete remix that my friend glenn rosenstein did on a song called mistakes were made that was uh on the boy king of tokyo album which is 2012 i think yep. and uh which is still a, a little bit a little bit of time ago um and uh he just surprised me he's working out of muscle shoals these days and uh mm -hmm. He threw up the, the tracks, which he still has, of course, and uh, to tune a new room down there. They just remodeled and refurbished a studio down there. And he just took that track and sent it to me. It was a very much a surprise out of the blue thing. And I loved what he did with it. And it sounds great. And so I talked with my buddy, Steve Boyle, and Steve made a video for it. So the video's up and online now. And uh, it's kind of a cartoony sort of thing but the song itself is about uh regret and uh self-forgiveness kind of an adult song but, great uh, awesome well we're gonna look that up um i can't wait to uh you know uh, basically hear your next project and, and continuing project keep making music man we well, love thank it you, Aaron. <laughs> we love it much and much appreciated great thanks so much for your time thanks for uh talking with me in this short little format here and uh, we will be in touch as you know as you continue to come out with more stuff. Well, thank you, Aaron. I appreciate it. I'm glad you got to see my messy office. <laughs> you got to have some sort of screen in the back, like I do. Well, you know, I I, <laughs> I, 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 I suppose I could. It always makes my hair look funny, but it already it already looks funny. So what am I saying? All right. That's great. Have a great day then. Take you care. You too. Thank Thank Bye. you for your time. No problem. Bye. Bye bye.